Hello and welcome to the 2021-22 winter forecast from NeoWeather. I'm meteorologist Brian Ivey, along with Mark Spencer. Can you believe 2021 is almost in the books already? I mean, where'd the year go? And we saw quite the variety of weather across the country from a cool spring, the summer heat, and some locations had a lot of rain. We even saw a couple of hurricanes this summer. How does all this activity play into the winter though? It could affect things, or maybe not. It's gonna be quite interesting to say the least with a second year La Nina taking shape across the Pacific. However, there are several other factors that will also come into play this winter that affect what we see. We'll show you what that means for much of the country. As we do every year, we'll break down our forecast by region so you can see what we're expecting for your area this winter. Some places will get quite cold and snowy while others look to stay warm and very dry. Yeah, last year we had several of those big ticket snow events, yeah. especially in February. <laughs> oh, and my goodness, a lot of those were across the eastern U.S. too. It was active. Will we see a similar setup this winter or not? We'll discuss it. That's coming up in just moments. Now, while you're watching our forecast, we'll feature our Neowise questions throughout the show with a couple of winter weather facts. Now, we may not be keeping score here, but feel free to at home and please let us know how you did in the comments. And if you're running a snow and ice management business, stay tuned for information on how NeoWeather can help you save money and also operate much more efficiently with our winter forecasting solutions and support. And if you're watching our show live and have questions, be sure to stay tuned at the end of the show for our live Q&A. We may read your question live on the air. Post any questions you have in the comments. Our winter forecast starts right now. to get to our final forecast product, we need to figure out what's the setup. Where are there going to be different troughs and ridges in the atmosphere? And we start that off with looking at the ENSO cycle or the El Nino Southern Oscillation. This year, we mentioned second year La Nina. What's the La Nina? Well, it's the blue colors here across the equatorial Pacific Ocean or below average sea surface temperature anomalies. Now, second year La Ninas are not the world's most common, but they're not rare. A second year El Nino is rare, but we don't have to worry about that. We want to pay attention to this warm blob here across the Pacific Ocean. The cool weather, cool sea surface temperatures there across the Gulf of Alaska into the Pacific Northwest, big time warmth. We're talking really far from average across the eastern U.S. there in the Atlantic Ocean. Those are all going to be some of the impacts that we're going to look out for. La Nina conditions now will continue throughout this winter with really good confidence. The question is, is it going to be more moderate or more weak? We're thinking kind of weak with brief moderate tendency. Now our NOAA model here, the CFS and the NASA model, that's a little bit aggressive. A lot of these that are just kind of a little bit into the La Nina category, we do agree with. Anything in the blue does signify a La Nina continuing. So with that, we have this pattern here that's going on. Thunderstorm convection activity. So you have a lot of different action in the atmosphere in terms of thunderstorms creating some warmth propagating further west. And what that does is it takes our sea surface temperatures and cools them due to upwelling because you have the water that comes up from further down in the ocean. And then that's your cooler than average temperatures in those sea surface, which also conditions for a little bit better chances for cooler air temperatures as well. Notice this ridge here, that's kind of where we have that warm blob and that pushes the jet stream up into Alaska and Canada and then brings it down across portions of the central and into even portions of the eastern U.S. Now this is overall very similar to what our actual pattern setup is. Let's slide in some low pressures here along our jet stream. This is the overall pattern not something that's gonna to be totally consistent throughout the winter. We're actually expecting some pretty big differences depending on as we go throughout November into December and January from really cold to some warm periods to maybe even some sustained cold and then sustained warmth. It'll be a lot of things happening, but when you average it all out, cold weather does look to be pretty vigorous at times across portions of Montana and the Dakotas, the upper Midwest and Great Lakes. 
We'll see an active pattern here with the jet stream. Warm weather, even compared to average across portions of the deep south. One of the risks is an area of high pressure ridging developing towards the southeast could push this jet stream up back and forth a little bit at times. So temperature swings are certainly likely, but overall colder than the last few winters across portions of much of the north. Now we're going to start off with some regional forecast maps. Take it away, Mark. Thanks, Brian. Let's kick things off in the Pacific Northwest. We'll have plenty of cold air and heavy mountain snow from the interior portions of Washington and Oregon, all the way into Montana and Wyoming. As we get closer to the coast with that jet stream coming on shore, that'll bring in enough warm air to keep things rain near the coast and along the I-5 corridor, but that'll also mean rainy periods as well. You have to get inland into the higher elevation to to start seeing things transition to snow. Across portions of central and southern Oregon and southern Idaho, things will be a bit of back and forth. You'll be in the battleground there. So some cold and snow at times, other times warm and dry. If you're looking for warmer and drier conditions though, that'll be across the southwestern United States, California, Nevada, portions of Utah into Arizona and New Mexico. Very warm and dry. This is the pattern we would typically see with a La Nina, and that means favorable wildfire conditions at times. You'll see some rain at times, but uh, overall warm and dry. Uh, if you're a skier and you love to go to Wyoming or Colorado and ski, great ski conditions here, Jackson Hole, Casper, Denver, great conditions for that this year. Eastern Colorado, we're looking at, at times, some rain, snow, a mix, or even just dry and cool. The core of the cold air can be found in the Northern Plains, across portions of the Dakotas, into Minnesota, Wisconsin, even as far south as central uh, Iowa, along the I-80 corridor there, could see some of the coldest air across the country this winter. We'll have numerous clippers traverse the area as well. Now, depending on where our jet stream does, too. It'll be a little further south, but it'll ebb and flow north to south at times. That could bring some of these synoptic systems into the area, and that could bring some heavy snow if it gets far enough north, a mix, or, or even some rain in some spots, too. So we'll kind of have to watch it as we go through the winter. We can only take it one system at a time there, but it is something to keep in mind. Outside of that, if that jet stream stays further south, looking at very cold conditions with clippers moving through at times. If you operate a snow removal business and you're sick and tired of the weather apps constantly changing on you, you're done with the hype on TV, and you're ready for a good, honest, accurate weather forecast backed by superior support, check this out. If you run a commercial snow and ice management company, you already know that making smart decisions begins with the weather forecast. But before savvy snow managers roll out their fleet of equipment, they need accurate and reliable weather information. NeoWeather provides impact-specific forecasts for your coverage area. Going above and beyond for high-risk and zero-tolerance accounts is essential in a competitive marketplace. Our clients say that we are the edge that they need. It's absolutely vital. I would go so far as to say if you don't have an accurate forecast, there's no way you can be competitive with the people that do. So with NeoWeather, you're going to get a 90% correct forecast. With the apps, you're flipping a coin. Yes, definitely. Frustrated with weather apps and local TV forecasts? They aren't meant for $1,000 business decisions. You need accurate weather forecasts with a focus on impacts and your service area. You need NeoWeather to give you peace of mind. Detailed weather information allows snow contractors to better schedule staff, prepare supplies and equipment, and have quicker response times. Yeah, take this for example. Holding crews back a couple of hours based on a more accurate storm arrival time saves your monthly investment for our service. Personalized service, uh, great communication. Uh, it's just a great, it's a great partnership. I think, I think they go the extra mile to, um, to help us succeed. We have a new client portal system to deliver interactive radar, current warnings, our forecast products, and more. Whether it's days out with our NEO First Look or our exclusive forecast breakdown, you'll receive detailed and easy to understand content. Got a question? Just give us a call or send us an email. We're here for you 24-7. You can't get that with Siri. Visit our website and request your free quote today. NEO Weather, the leading front in weather. 
Hey, you northern snowbirds, you want to head south, you want to avoid the shoveling and the snow blowing and those brisk days that make your face hurt. Sometimes though, old man winter likes to visit the south, at least occasionally. Not this year too often at all. I think it's going to be pretty mild across much of Texas, into Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia, especially into Florida. Yes, there could be a couple of times where we do see a cold front dip further south and bring some pretty cold weather but those wintry risks are lower than average, especially across Florida. I don't think you're gonna to have too much freeze risk this year. And as we shimmy into portions of the Ohio and Tennessee Valley, it gets to be a little bit more active at times, but still, unless you get further north, we're not looking at a ton of heavy hitting winter weather, but that's a different story in portions of Northern Illinois, uh, Northern Indiana into Michigan, Ohio, into portions of the upstate of New York as well could be dealing with a decent amount of lake effect snow. Not a guarantee, but relatively speaking, our water temperatures on the Great Lakes, well above average. Boiling compared to average due to the very warm time that we have had over the last few months or so. Now we've had this type of setup before and it hasn't resulted in a super ton of lake effect snow. But if we do get the setup and the setup could be better due to more cold air outbreaks in November into December, we could be adding up a lot of heavy lake effect snow squalls. A lot of energy in the atmosphere with that cold air over those warm lakes. Core of the cold big time out across portions of Minnesota, the Dakotas into Wisconsin. The Arctic sea ice up towards the North Pole is well above what we had the last few years or so. Think of it like bags of ice in the freezer and you leave the door open, all that cold air coming on out and where the jet stream's located, it gets dragged down into portions of the United States. Could be pretty potent at times. Further into the mid-Atlantic, it's really an area that's going to be up and down, probably more in the way of warm, warmth, further south especially. Carolina's outside the higher elevations around like the Smokies and whatnot, I'm not expecting too many winter risks as far as snowfall. Should be pretty mild at times get a little bit more interesting with some mix events, maybe a little snow if you thread the needle into our nation's capital, into portions of Virginia. The higher terrain of West Virginia will certainly be dealing with some snowfall at times, but much better chances where it's gonna be more confidently colder, like portions of upstate New York, like the Adirondacks, Burlington, Vermont in towards portions of Maine, the upstate portion in towards portions of the interior Northeast in New England, but we'll have a lot of mixing events likely further towards the coast, but it should be pretty active. So between rain and snow and, and some good cold shots, I think snow lovers shouldn't be too disappointed. All right, let's put all of the pieces together and take a look at our winter outlook across the entire United States, the core of the cold air across the Northern Plains and into the Western Great Lakes. We'll see plenty of cold temperatures here this winter. Surrounding that will be below average for much of Montana and even as far south as the Central Plains, Oklahoma City getting in on some of those below average temperatures at times. And that'll continue eastward across St. Louis, Chicago, the Great Lakes and the interior portions of New England. Where's it gonna be warmer? Well, you gotta head south for that, of course. So the southeastern United States, even portions of the mid-Atlantic not looking all that bad this winter. All this is gonna be driven by that southeastern ridge and where that sets up and how strong it gets. We will see above average temperatures across southern Texas, central and northern Texas should be near average. And of course, we'll see much above average temperatures across the southwestern United States where we will also see below average precipitation. Again, that's good wildfire conditions there, unfortunately. Above average precipitation can be found across the interior portions of the Northwest the central Rockies and of course the northern plains and western Great Lakes where we'll see plenty of clippers this winter and where that jet stream rounds to the northeast we will see above average precipitation as well across the middle Mississippi Valley, the Ohio and Tennessee Valleys and into interior portions of New England. In terms of snowfall for this winter again we don't get crazy and try to pinpoint how much snow we think is going to fall in any location and said we look at snowfall compared to average or it can be above average or below average, near average, 
that sort of thing. So we'll see above average snow across much of the northern plains, the Great Lakes, into the Ohio Valley and into New England, much above average snowfall across the mountains in interior New England and across northern Ohio into western New York from lake effect. We'll also see above average snowfall across western Michigan from some lake effect as well. Much above average snowfall, of course, across portions of the uh, northwest, the central Rockies, and even into portions of northern Nevada could see slightly higher uh, snowfall than normal. Elsewhere, we're looking at near average snowfall or almost no snowfall or even much precipitation to be found across portions of the south. Thank you for watching the 2021-2022 winter forecast from NeoWeather. For more information about NeoWeather, visit our newly redesigned website at neoweather.us. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram for the latest weather updates. And if you're looking for accurate weather forecasts for your business this winter, be sure to visit our website to learn more, request a quote, or use our new instant quote tool. Our forecasts are focused on more than just how much snow you're going to expect. We discuss how the weather will impact your operation and go into detail on each and every winter weather event. Plus, you'll have 24 seven access to our team of meteorologists whenever you need us. Thanks again for watching. Our live Q&A is coming up next. <music>